Well, I tried to tell you so. Yes, I did. Baby, now I got the flow. Return of the cap once again. Return of the cap. Return of the cap. Reports came out yesterday that Canelo, baby, baby, you want baby, I know that, could fight against Jaime Munguia next year, 2024, and on Showtime after it was announced that Showtime Boxing is getting out of the boxing business. Hmm. Let's talk uh, about it. What up, Fight World? It's your boy, Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. You dig? So, yesterday, there was a piece of information that came out from ESPN Deportes regarding Canelo Alvarez. You guys see it on the screen. And basically, it was saying that Canelo could face Jaime Munguia as a possibility for Cinco de Mayo of 2024. So we know Canelo just fought against Jermel Charlo. It was not a fun fight to watch, in my opinion. And I guess, you know, he took no damage in it, really. So he's looking for his next opponent. So ESPN knocked out. They're saying that Canelo could fight Jaime Munguia. His record 42-0, 33 knockouts on Cinco de Mayo weekend. Now, for me, there were many things that struck me as odd with this report. Right. For one, Canelo said that he don't want to fight someone who's Mexican. It's not my words, it's his. Canelo being from Mexico, Guadalajara, Mexico, he says he does not want to fight against someone who bears the same flag as him. So wouldn't that rule out Jaime Munguia, who is definitely Mexican? So in and of itself, that part didn't make sense. I'm like, where did Jaime Munguia come in from? You know, especially when the man said he don't want to fight a Mexican fighter, which is stupid. And I think Canelo deserves more and more criticism for that ridiculous statement because it's boxing. It's a competitive sport. Can you imagine other sports? Imagine if Michael Jordan said he don't want to play against no brothers. He's not going up against Patrick Ewing. He doesn't want to play against Carl Malone. He doesn't want to play against Grandmama Larry Johnson. He doesn't want to go against Penny Hardaway. I mean, it just that would sound ridiculous. And people would say Michael Jordan is ducking. What do you mean you don't want to play against no black players? That just Dominique Wilkins, Magic Johnson. I mean, it just you've never heard of this in any sport. I mean, imagine Tom Brady saying he don't want to play against no white boys. So he couldn't have played against Peyton Manning or he doesn't want to go against another white quarterback like Drew Brees or Brett Favre or Aaron Rodgers. I mean, it just sounds stupid. So I don't even know why Canelo said that, but he did say it. So that was one thing. You know, how are you going to fight Jaime Munguia and you just said you didn't want to fight a Mexican fighter? That's strike one. Strike two is that, what is this? This is a yearbook photo? Man, come on. Bro, he looked like John Travolta and Problem Child Jr. <laughs> he looked like Jr. from Problem Child mixed with Good uh, Fonz and John Travolta in Greece, man. Hey, Canelo got to chill, bro. He look like Rick Roll right here. Do 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 do. Never gonna give you up. Never gonna let you down. I never meant to hurt you. Anyway, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel. It's free, and I'm the best in the business when it comes to doing this. Ain't nobody like me. Can't nobody do it like me. So these pictures are weird. Let me get off. Even weirder. You know, DreamWorks, Pixar, Canelo. Hey, Canelo tripping, bro. Anyway, so he said he didn't want to fight a Mexican fighter, Jaime Muget. Right? So that's strike one. Strike two is, okay, he kissing his girl. Does he have any regular posts? Hold on. Y'all, I'm getting distracted. So he said he didn't want to fight a Mexican fighter. Let's try this again. Didn't want to fight a Mexican fighter. Then Canelo Alvarez strike two would be he left Eddie Hearn. He left the zone and he did this three fight deal with Al Heyman and premier boxing champs, PBC. He's only actually fought one fight, which was a lackluster fight, in my opinion, against Jermail Charlo, as I stated earlier. His son is cute. Let's keep going. So he got two more fights with PBC. So Jaime Mugia is a fighter that 
is fighting on the zone and he's with golden boy and canelo has been very very vocal that he don't really mess with oscar de la hoya anymore he's said this in many interviews where he's just like oscar got a lot of demons and you know he's not my cup of tea type of thing right he said this on the breakfast club that's one of the more recent ones so he don't really mess with oscar so why would he want to do business to fight jaime mugia strike two said he didn't want to fight a mexican fighter someone with the same flag doesn't really mess with oscar de la hoya jaime mugia is a fighter who fights on a different platform and showtime strike three is showtime said they are going out of the boxing business and mma business and their programming so this whole report was weird because the report said that even though showtime's getting out of the business of boxing that canelo he was going to fight on showtime this is what i tell you guys all the time on my channel when i don't make videos it's not that i didn't see it it's not that i didn't hear the same things it's i'm not going to waste my time so for me I use a little bit of sources mixed with intuition and my own opinions, and I give you guys accuracy. Oh, that's cool. He got Chavez in his comments. So I give you guys accuracy. That's what it's all about. I don't want to just put out bad information and clickbait and stuff. Oh, Canelo's fighting on Showtime. The whole thing didn't make sense. Fast forward to the future, Dan Raphael, he responded. It said, Canelo's next two fights in 2024 will reportedly both still be broadcast by Showtime pay-per-view in the U.S. Despite Showtime shutting down at the end of 2023, this has been previously agreed as part of the Al Heyman's PBC deal, according to ESPN Mexico, as I stated. And now you look at it, and Dan Raphael is basically clapping back, and he went directly to the source, and you guys see that right there. It says, per Showtime spokesperson, there are no plans for any Showtime pay-per-views of any kind in 2024. Forensic File Ego is back. So you guys have to be very cautious where you get information from. Grand opening, grand closing. The very same day that these reports came out, they were immediately debunked. Shout out to the work that Dan Redfield did and contacting his sources to see if it was cap. But I mean, it's getting ridiculous. Boxing journalism and sources and stuff is making the sport look ridiculous because there's so much information. There was reports, David Benavidez is fighting David Morrell Jr. People got excited. People started reporting about it. And then come to find out he has a great fight with Andre, but he's not fighting David Morrell for those who wanted to see that fight specifically. It's just a lot of bad information being put out in boxing. And a lot of people want to be first, but they don't care about being accurate. And I really blame the fans because the fans support sources that keep getting their information wrong. And then there's no reason to change. Why would you change if you could just put out bad information and then people still go to that as a reliable source. That's why on my channel, I do a different subscribe to the channel. I'm the best in the business and I definitely strive to be accurate and on point. And I do a damn good job of that best in the business. Subscribe to the channel. I'm out. Introducing Super Thanks right here on the official Boxing Ego YouTube. Super Thanks allows you, the viewers, to show a little bit of extra gratitude, which enables me as a full-time content creator to push out the content you need in the world of boxing. Underneath all the videos, you will see a heart with the dollar sign in it. You can enter any amount that you find suitable as a super thanks. A brand new interactive and colorful way to get your comments highlighted and noticed by not only myself, but other people on the YouTube platform. Super thanks, a unique and cool way to show and applaud us full-time content creators. Hopefully you guys enjoy the content. Super thanks. The future is now. The Hibernation 5s by Kenichi Bear. Hybrid gaming and lifestyle headphones. Out of the box, you can connect to any console or PC. Bluetooth ready with a low latency USB adapter, color RGB and extreme bass mode. The Hibernation 5s adjust to you. Whether you need a gaming, travel gym or lifestyle headphones the hibernations got you covered the new hibernation fives link in the description customize the way you hear the world welcome to the nation 
Are you tired of your YouTube videos not getting any views? Well, consider TubeBuddy. I've used TubeBuddy for years to scale up my YouTube channel. Now we're sitting over 200,000 subscribers. TubeBuddy is a browser extension that offers a ton of built-in productivity and time-saving services to take your channel to the next level. Use my link in the description to get started with TubeBuddy and level up your channel faster. We work it.